For years, the fragile peace between North and South Korea has hung by a thread. That delicate balance has now reached an alarming breaking point, with tensions soaring to unprecedented levels. The recent breach of the Inter-Korean Agreement, designed to promote cooperation, peace, and mutual respect, stands as a stark symbol of this escalating conflict. The history of Korean tensions is deeply rooted. Decades of conflict, periodic agreements, and ongoing disputes have shaped the complex relationship between these neighboring nations. The North's nuclear ambitions, coupled with regional power plays, also continue to fuel this tense atmosphere. Amid these mounting pressures, what role do the United States and Russia play? Join us as we explore how North Korea launches its deadliest artillery and is ready for war. On the 13th of September 20th, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met with Russian President Vladimir Putin at the Vostochny spaceport in the Russian Far East. Kim crossed into Russia on a bulletproof train on a rare foreign trip and also his first since the coronavirus pandemic. After his arrival, Kim said his visit was a clear manifestation of North Korea, prioritizing the strategic importance of its relations with Russia. He assured Moscow that they had his full backing in its sacred fight against the West, or specifically Ukraine. Putin also assured that Russia would help North Korea launch satellites. It would not be until a month later, after satellite images would emerge, that North Korea was supplying Russia with hundreds of boxes filled with ammunition in its ongoing battle against Ukraine. However, if Russia could be receiving hundreds of boxes filled with ammunition from North Korea, it must be giving something back to North Korea. Analysts say that in return for North Korea's backing of the Kremlin, North Korea could be interested in advanced technology from Russia for its weapons, particularly its nuclear program. When the war between Russia and Ukraine would start, no one, absolutely no one, expected it to last this long. And now, with Russia dangerously low on ammunition, it turns to one of its oldest and most controversial allies, North Korea. It begs the question, when did the relationship between Russia and North Korea start? Following World War II, the Soviet Union was established as one of the world's most powerful states. And on the 12th of October, 1948, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, USSR, was the first to recognize North Korea as the sole legitimate authority in all of Korea. The Soviet Union would support North Korea in the Korean War, and North Korea was founded as part of the Communist bloc and received major Soviet political, military, and economic support. In fact, it was the Soviet Union that would keep the economy of North Korea afloat Kim Il-sung, the late grandfather of the current North Korea leader Kim Jong-un, was installed as the leader by Soviet officials. For decades, the Soviet Union would continue to provide North Korea with aid shipments. And with some of this money, North Korea has been producing large amounts of artillery shells and rockets, compatible with Soviet Union and Russian weapons in case another war breaks out against their southern neighbors. The good relationship North Korea enjoyed with the Soviet Union would continue with Russia, despite the fall of the Soviet Union on the 26th of December, 1991, when its 15 constituents would gain full independence. During the meeting between the two leaders, Kim Jong-un called for an exponential increase in production of nuclear weapons for his country to play a more prominent and significant role in a coalition of nations confronting the United States of America in a new kind of war. Whilst both nations agreed to boost their defense ties without specifics, this caused analysts worldwide to begin speculating on the nature of their agreements. If it was what they thought it was, it would put both countries in clear violation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions, of which Russia is a permanent member. Their suspicions would later prove to be true a month later. On the 13th of October, 2023, exactly a month later after the meetings between both nations, John Kirby, a National Security Council spokesman, announced that as many as 1,000 containers with varied munitions had been delivered from North Korea to Russian borders in recent weeks. 
This claim was backed up by a White House photo release of imagery of about 300 containers assembled in North Korea, delivered to an ammunition depot in southwestern Russia near Tikoretsk, only 180 miles away from the Ukrainian border. After the White House accusations, a senior Russian diplomat, Oleg Burmistrov, was quoted in Russian state media, denying that Moscow had violated the United Nations sanctions. North Korea would also deny sending arms to Russia. However, newer satellite images analyzed by the British Royal United Services Institute, RUSI, suggests that North Korea's trade of military equipment and munitions is a much more elaborate and extensive operation than initially thought. Not only one but two ships have been traveling since mid-August. Both ships, the Angra and the Maria, have made at least five runs between the northeastern North Korean port of Rajin and the secure port facility in Dunai, Russia's far east. Although the analysis noted that both ships at times turned off their transponders, making it difficult to track them, and although it is difficult to tell what is being transported, the images show ships linked to Russian military logistics network, strongly suggesting that these commercial vessels carry military equipment. About the same time, the ammunition depot in Tikoretsk went from containing a modest number of munitions storage pits to more than 100 that were newly dug as of September. James Brine, the author of the new analysis, said that Russia was suspected of sending empty containers to the port of Rajin to be filled with weapons. This analysis showed the clearest evidence that, after decades of support from Russia, Pyongyang is now repaying its debt by helping support Russia's war effort. Prior, the two ships had no record of running these routes between North Korea and Russia until after the high-level meetings between the two nations. The satellite image analysis provided by the Rusi found that the Russian-flagged cargo ship, the Angra, began to travel the routes between Rajin, North Korea, and Dunai, Russia, as early as mid-August. Towards the end of the month, another Russian vessel, Maria, became involved in a similar path. Shortly after they began operating along the route, according to the ship tracking website, Marine Traffic, the two vessels turned off the signal of their automatic identification system, making it difficult to track them. In the analyzed images, the two ships make multiple trips between Dunai and Rajin, picking up and delivering cargo at each location. At the Rajin airport, the two ships load and unload containers at different docks. In Dunai, the ships have unloaded their cargo while accompanied by a military ship. Coincidentally, or rather conveniently, North Korea happens to be producing two of the types of munitions that Russia have used in the war heavily, the Soviet-era 122mm Grad rockets and the 122 howitzer artillery rounds. Now, with the war in Ukraine continuing with no end in sight, Russia is desperately in need of more. Russia and North Korea have been collaborating far longer than the West could have possibly imagined. Other weapons included in this exchange also likely have other conventional weapons like artillery platforms and rocket launchers. This duo, Angra and Maria, have made at least five trips since, moving hundreds of containers, according to the images. The latest delivery from North Korea to Russia took place on the 14th of October. Angra is owned by Emsur Leasing, a Russian company that has already been sanctioned by the United States, the United Kingdom and Ukraine for the transportation of weapons and military equipment in the interests of the Russian government. The ship itself was accused of delivering weapons to Syria, South Sudan and Iraq. The company is in turn handled by the Marine Trans Shipping, another controversial maritime shipping sanctioned for transporting weapons for the Russian government. The Maria is owned by the Asia Shipping Holdings, a company based in Cyprus, and has links to a firm in Moscow that the Royal United Services analysts say oversees logistics for Russia's Ministry of Defense. The registration documents for the Maria show a company called JSC Sofracht is associated with the vessel. In 2019, the United States named Sofracht as a company behind a sanctions evasion conspiracy to aid Russian forces operating in Syria in support of the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Following the critical announcement about this arms trade, 
American spokesman John Kirby stated, The expanding military partnership between the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and Russia, including any technology transfers from Russia to the DPRK, undermines regional stability and the global non-proliferation regime. A senior research fellow for land warfare at RUSI, Jack Watling, also said that this exchange would likely have a severe impact on the trajectory of the war in Ukraine because of the already in-stock ammunition amounts by North Korea. The United States and allies have searched the world for additional munitions for Ukraine, including the 155mm shells used by the United States, provided howitzers and other caliber shells for Soviet Union still in use by Ukraine. In response to the violations caused by Russia, the United States decided to end the war as soon as possible and has already imposed sanctions on individuals working to facilitate arms deals with Russia. According to Kirby, America will enforce those where appropriate and will likely impose new sanctions against anyone who seeks to enable Russia's continuation of the war with Ukraine. Given that the invasion of Ukraine by Russia was caused by Ukraine's desire to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, which will cause the United States to have a military base in Ukraine, which is close to Russia, the United States have not only provided Ukraine with weapons, but have also supported Ukraine with monetary donations. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the United States has sent over $75 billion in assistance to Ukraine. In return for its continuous support of Russia's war, Rusi and the United States believe that Pyongyang is seeking military assistance from Russia from fighter aircraft, surface-to-air missiles, armored vehicles, ballistic missile production equipment, and more advanced technologies. Since the early days of the Ukraine war, President Joe Biden of the United States has voiced suspicion that North Korea has supplied weapons to Russia. These beliefs only became more amplified as it became clear last year that Moscow was running low on advanced weaponry and was expending massive amounts of shells in what has become essentially an artillery first war. Given North Korea's aggressive nature, it is little wonder that countries of the world would be on edge at the news that Russia might be helping North Korea with its nuclear program. It is already clear that both countries have violated the resolutions of the United Nations Security Council. It is especially cause for concern for North Korea's neighbors, South Korea, and its biggest allies, the United States. The United States President, Joe Biden, has warned of dire consequences for North Korea should it launch a nuclear attack in a bid to reassure South Korea of Washington's commitment to defending its ally against the North. In a joint news conference with his South Korean counterpart, Joe Biden said a nuclear attack by North Korea against the United States or its allies or partner is unacceptable and will result in the end of whatever regime were it to take such action. The concerns of both countries towards North Korea is not without cause, as North Korea has a long history of testing long-range weapons. On the 4th of January, 2024, Ukrainian presidential aide Mykhailo Poldoyak confirmed that Russia hit Ukraine with missiles from North Korea, corroborating an earlier assertion by Washington. Making a statement on X, Poldoyak said it was no longer a disguise. As part of its genocidal war, the Russian Federation for the first time struck with missiles received from North Korea. The United States would not say specifically what types of missiles Pyongyang sent to Russia. John Kirby, the United States spokesman, said they had a range of about 900 kilometers, about 550 miles. On Friday, the 5th of January, 2024, North Korea fired more than 200 artillery shells near two South Korean islands, Seoul's defense ministry said. Residents on both islands were ordered to evacuate. The Seoul Defense Ministry said the actions threatened peace and that it would respond. It released a statement shortly after, stating it was a provocative act that threatens the peace on the Korean peninsula. It sternly warned that North Korea will bear full responsibility for the current escalating crisis and strongly urged them to immediately cease these actions. This is in clear violation of the Inter-Korean Agreement. What exactly is the Inter-Korean Agreement? It was signed in 2018 
and the agreement focused on mutual respect between the two nations, the renunciation of armed aggression, the guarantee of exchange of people between the two countries, and cooperation in many sectors. On the 17th of December 2023, North Korea fired a long-range ballistic missile into the sea in a resumption of its weapons testing activities. Observers said that North Korea's back-to-back -back launches were likely a protest against the moves by South Korea and the United States to bolster their nuclear deterrence plans in the face of North Korea's evolving nuclear threats. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the missile was fired from an area near the North Korean capital of Pyongyang at around 10.38 p.m. and flew 570 kilometers the equivalent of 354 miles before landing in the sea. The South Korean military said it was sharing launch information with the United States and Japan to further analyze the details while maintaining readiness against the possibility of additional North Korean military activities. It criticized the launch as a clear violation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions that has banned North Korea from using ballistic technologies. The Security Council imposed sanctions on North Korea after its first nuclear explosion test in 2006 and have tightened them so far over the years in a total of 10 resolutions seeking to cut funds and curb North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. However, this has been unsuccessful so far. The last sanctions resolution was adopted by the Council in December 2017. In a bid to counter nuclear threats from the North, Washington agreed to deploy nuclear-armed submarines to South Korea and allow Seoul to join its nuclear planning operations. And in the event of a nuclear attack by Pyongyang, the two countries promised to respond swiftly, overwhelmingly and decisively using the full force of the alliance, including the United States' nuclear weapons. North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile launch caused a clash between North Korea, Russia, with the United States, South Korea, and their allies at the Emergency United Nations Security Council. North Korea called it a warning countermeasure to threats from the United States and other hostile forces. North Korean Ambassador Kim Song said it was the most dangerous year in the military security landscape of the Korean Peninsula, pointing to the stepped-up United States, South Korean military exercises. The United States and nine allies pointed to five North Korean intercontinental ballistic missile launches and over 25 ballistic missiles launch and using three satellite launches using ballistic missile technology, violating multiple Security Council resolutions and threatening the peace and stability of its neighbors and the international community. In a statement read before the Council meeting by the United States Deputy Ambassador, Robert Wood, surrounded by 10 other diplomats, condemned the launch of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile on December 18, 2023, and all launches before it. Russia's deputy United Nations ambassador, Anna Evstigneva, called the attempts to condemn Pyongyang as a one-sided approach. Anna warned that the situation is escalating to a dangerous brink, pointing to both Pyongyang and Seoul, justifying their hostile moves as self-defense. She also accused the United States of deploying its massive military machines in the region, saying it looks more and more like preparations for an offensive operation. The United States has repeatedly denied any hostile intentions. Evstigneva said that Russia calls for a peaceful settlement of all issues on the Korean peninsula through political and diplomatic means without external pressure. Wood, the United States deputy ambassador, countered that United States military exercises are defensive and that it is North Korea that have violated United Nations Security Council resolutions, not South Korea, not Japan, not the United States. He also pointed out that the United States have repeatedly tried to have an unconditional dialogue with Pyongyang, but it has refused. North Korea's defense ministry also slammed its rival's move to include nuclear operation scenarios in their joint drills, describing it as an open threat to potentially use nuclear weapons against the North. It also vowed to prepare unspecified counteroffensive measures. The North Korean ministry also criticized the United States for increasingly deploying major military assets to South Korea in a show of strength, 
including strategic bombers, etc., which it claimed amounted to a reckless military threat and was destabilizing the region. One thing is clear at this moment in time, despite the efforts of the United States and its allies in a bid to deter North Korea's nuclear programs, Kim Jong-un has made it clear North Korea would never abandon its nuclear goals. In fact, the country is doing the complete opposite by heavily improving its nuclear capabilities. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.